guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, if you are new, my name is Mary. I am a homeschooling mama to a pre-Ker and a first grader and this is the fourth and final video in my homeschool planning series. So my previous videos within this series, if you missed them, reviewed the types of planning and homeschool there are. I went through a live annual planning for our homeschool uh, school year next year which is 2024 to 2025 and then I also discussed our weekly flow within our homeschool School, how, how it works day to day, week to week, and hour by hour, like what we do in our homeschool. So this final video is going to be a live planning with me a week in our homeschool in the system that we use, which is Trello. If you're not familiar with Trello, it is a project management tool that I absolutely adore. I was using it long before homeschooling for grocery lists and packing lists and all the things to make my household run. And then I realized that I could use it for my homeschool planning, which was mind-blowing, but also amazing. Um, it's very visual and I am a very visual person so it helps me see where everything is for the week but it's also very flexible so I can move pieces around as need be so it's just been a game changer in our homeschool. The other thing I like about it is that it maintains records for us electronically so I am a paper and pen girl but this is one of those tools that I easily switched over to because I realized the benefit of it and also it was super user friendly. So if you guys are interested in seeing what that looks like, I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to the computer so you can see my screen, how I plan everything out, how I make it look pretty too, even I'll show you guys all that, the fun extras that you don't necessarily need to do but help me when I'm planning. So if that's of interest to you, I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around to my computer screen so you can see what I'm doing on there in Trello and show you guys how we plan our week in Trello. So here is the main webpage for Trello.com. Um, this is for your desktop view. Um, the one thing I love about Trello is they also have a mobile app. So if I don't have my computer upstairs with me in the study room and I'm trying to see, okay, what do we have to do next? I can pull it up on my Apple phone or on my iPad and I can use that to then notate, okay, we did lesson two for language arts and, um, you know, and hey, type in some notes about what we did maybe. So it's really convenient to have the desktop and the mobile app. Now, if you're new to Trello, this might look a little crazy. Um, my intention with this video is not to give a tutorial on how to use Trello, but just to show you my thought process and how I plan our weeks with our homeschool curriculum within Trello. I'm more than happy to do a more in-depth look at Trello and the different features that it offers but of course just through the nature of this video you'll get to see some of those too but I'm not going to go into full depth or else this video would take an hour but first thing I just did want to mention is that you'll see over here we have workspaces so these are just like massive bulletin board folders is the best way to explain it like this is my folder for first and pre-k so my oldest is in first youngest is in pre-k you'll see that i started making a second workspace for second and kindergarten for next year and i started building out some of that just to play around with the planning and how next year is going to look within each of the workspaces you'll see that there's different boards um, here I have all of our language arts links week by week in this board I have our library books week by week I, at the beginning of the year I figured out okay what books do I need to check out every week and I created individual checklists so that I can stay ahead of that and request these books be on hold at my library ahead of time so I'm not kind of trying to come from behind and then I have science and geography links here I can easily click into on my iPad to let the girls watch and then you'll notice starting with week 16 is when I have individual boards um, broken out into different groups. I was using a paper planner prior to week 16, which is why you don't see anything before that. I still have that planner for records, but it just didn't make sense to go ahead and put that all in Trello. So I'm just leaving it written in the planner and then everything from week 16 on is in Trello. Now we are at present in week uh, 28. This upcoming week is week 28. I'm going to show you how I'm going to plan for week 29 the following week. So we'll click into here. And I group these based off of our literature that we're reading. So we're doing um, short stories from different books. So week 24 to week 27 which was Scottish Folk tale and fairy tales and then right now we're currently reading about Vietnamese children's favorite uh, stories so that's going to take four weeks to get through that um, book and so that was the best way for me to kind of compartmentalize all of it so I'm going to click into here and you'll see here's the current week that I'm about to start so this I'm doing this Sunday March 17th is when I'm recording it so this is going to be my upcoming week I went ahead and already copied all these to create 
uh, lists for the next week that we're going to plan for. I just wanted to take that off our plate because you didn't want to see me doing that. That would have taken um, a little longer than you probably wanted to sit for. So just to show you how I did that, I hit the three buttons up here. I hit copy list and then I updated it to week 29 and then March 25th and then I hit create list. I'm not going to do that because I already did it. But once I did that, it created a copy and then I moved it over here. So the way I organize these is I create five lists for each week. Each of them is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then I update it with which what week it is and then what the date should be for that day. So what I do from a visual perspective to help me compartmentalize week to week, I create a weekend list. I normally don't put anything in here because we don't really school on the weekends, but if we end up doing it, I'll put in here something that we did for like a field trip or if we ended up doing some math on the weekend, I'll add a card here so we can keep that for our records. But also it just helps me break between one week to the next visually so I can see them better. So let's look at this week, week 29. That's when we're planning for. And again, um, this week 29 is based on our literature program and then everything else kind of follows in suit with that. So the first thing I do when I'm creating a new week in Trello is I actually like to go ahead and put in any appointments we have going on for that week. So I've got my planner next to me um, and I can see anything that we need to put in there because even though it may not necessarily be homeschool related, I need to know if I have a dentist appointment that day because I need to figure out if am I going to be able to get done everything I need to. If not, I need to move it to other days. So let's go ahead and update these. So since I copied it from the previous week, it says March 18th, but this ninja is going to be on March 25th. So we need to update that. There we go. It's still at 430, so we're going to save that. You'll also notice I have labels on pretty much every single card I have because these labels allow me to search. Later on, if I'm trying to look for records of something, it'll allow me to search by the label. So, for example, if I'm trying to pull up my reading list for the entire year, all I have to do is, here, I'll show you an example. Search by the reading label. You'll notice I have our Vietnamese children's favorite stories. This is a literature we're reading for the next four weeks. I have it listed as literature, but also as reading. So I can just click on reading label and that'll give me an entire reading list for the year. It is so simple and easy. I can print it off if I need to give it to the state for auditing purposes. It's just the easiest thing in the world. So I have now updated Ninja. The only other thing we have on Monday is chess at 11 a.m add card. I'm going to click into that. I'll add the label for clubs and extracurriculars. I'm going to add a date because I like to check off it. It'll um, give me a notification. Hey, this is coming up for, um, for you. So we'll do 11 a.m. Save. And then once I'm done with that, I will click due date and check that to show that we went to the event. Ooh, there is also an event next Thursday. My girls love going to the library. It is the library Lego challenge. And I think we're going to go to the Thursday one. We may go to the Tuesday one, which is at 430. If that's the case, I'll just update this card and drag it over to Thursday. But we're going to try and go to the Tuesday one at six because I think it'll, or excuse me, 630 because I think it'll make more sense. All right, so let's do a, ch oh, not a checklist. We'll do a label, we'll do extracurricular, and then we'll add the date. It's for the 26th at 6, 30 p.m. Okay, perfect. Let's see, do I have any, oh, we do have another event. We have soccer practice that day, but we also have a hike with our co-op. That's at 2 p.m. So label, co-op, and then I'll put in, oop, not the checklist, the date. I don't know why I keep hitting that. So that's 2 p.m. Okay, and that pops up. We're good to go there. And then the next day we have another event with our other homeschool group, and it's a lunch. Or it's, excuse me, Oh, if I could type, that'd be great. Okay, so 
I think that's all the events that we have going on that week. So I can just leave it at that. It just makes life easier for me when I'm looking at my list and things I need to get done. Okay, so I've got all my events. Now that I've done that, I go back to the top of each of my lists and I plan my core curriculum first. So my both my girls are doing math with confidence and each of these cards, I put a checklist. I have Charlotte's name under here. That's my daughter that's doing level K. And I put lesson TBD because what I'll do is my girls with math, they might do one lesson, they might do five. It's crazy. It just depends on the day and how they're feeling. So I don't put any parameters about how much they should do. They need to at least do one lesson though, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's all I ask. So when they've done that, I'll, you know, go in and say 13.1, whatever they completed. And then I'll check the box, but leaving it TBD just makes it easier for me. It's there ready to go. I just need to update what lesson we completed. And then I check it off for records. So I have math with confidence on Monday. I have it here for Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I have it here for Thursday. Perfect. Uh, next, well, here, I guess the best thing to talk about real quick is these Aesop fables in Spanish on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so Aesop's fable is something that we do Tuesday and Thursday morning in morning time. And we just read one, uh, story from the book. They're really short. So again, I leave it TBD cause I'll put in the page number that we read and then the story title that we read, and then I'll check it off. So I just leave it open-ended. Um, and then with Spanish lessons, we also do that during morning time because they're pretty quick because it's preschool, you know, early ele- elementary level. So nothing crazy. Um, so I have it here for Tuesdays. And then we're also adding a third on Fun Friday just because they're so quick and easy. The girls really like them. So we're just adding that in. And all I have to do is come in here, update this portion, which I already did because that would have taken some time um, with you guys on screen. So we have lesson, lesson six, activity two. It is a PDF so I can copy and paste what we need to do, which is great. And then I click that button once we've completed it just to show for my records when I'm looking back that we did do this. I want to acknowledge that we completed this lesson. So I like that checklist below. And then I hit save. So we've got activity two. On Thursday, we have activity three, and then on Friday, we have activity four. And you can see they all changed because I've updated what we need to do for that activity. Okay, so then, so we have that on Monday through Thursday already figured out, and then Friday Spanish lesson. So what do we do after math each day? So generally, it's language arts. (laughs) So let me come up here. Oh. That's an old event from the previous, so I'm going to archive this. If you have something that you don't want in Trello, you just hit archive and it goes away. So language arts, we don't do a ton on Mondays because we just have a lot of extracurriculars going on during the day, which is normally our study time, so we keep it pretty light. My oldest reads her vocabulary words for reading. She has one um, writing lesson from Evan Moore, which is pretty short. And then we do 20 minutes of all about spelling. And again, leaving that TBD so I can update what lesson we get done. Then my youngest just does phonics, just one lesson of ordinary parents guide to reading phonics. And then she's done and I can click that completed. So that's all for Monday. Monday's done. So we're rocking and rolling there. Tuesday, language arts is a little bit heavier. My oldest um, reads her vocabulary words, and then there's a printed out paragraph that's um, starting to get harder and harder with each week that she's reading. Um, She has an Evan and Moore grammar lesson. We only have three of those a day, so I do them Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then she has her second writing assignment for the week from Evan Moore, all about spelling. And then she does a handwriting page. Sometimes she does two, so I leave it TBD again. Then my youngest has a phonics lesson, handwriting, and then she has a worksheet for letter Y. And looking at language arts for Wednesday, we're just changing it a little bit. We have copy work this day, so no handwriting. My uh, youngest also has a tracing name sheet that so she can learn her first and last name. We're going to start adding her middle name in there soon. So just going with the week. And then Thursday for language arts. Um, my oldest does a mini poem in Blossom and Root. She has her final grammar lesson, fourth writing lesson, all about spelling in a handwriting lesson. And then my youngest is then doing what she was doing the day before. So those lists are all pretty much up to date. I'll just go ahead and update how far we got with each lesson and then check it off. 
On Tuesdays and Thursdays is when we do our readings from um, Vietnamese children's favorite stories. So we'll be reading this book for the next four weeks. So I'm not going to do it right now, but I need to update. This is from last week, The Legend of Bon Chung and Bon Day. I need to update what story we're going to read for Tuesday and Thursday. So I'll go ahead and update that after I get off this recording with you guys. And then same with we're doing geography activities on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for Vietnam. So alongside this, we're learning about the country of Vietnam. So it's pretty cool that they tie that in. And it's super simple tasks each day, but it's little by little we're building on our knowledge of Vietnam. The next thing we update is... Tuesdays, we do geography. It's torchlight. And so I have a card for each book we have to read that week based on what country we're learning about. So Central Europe is the country we learned about last week. I need to update it. I'm not going to do it on here because that would take a little bit too long for you guys. But then I just go into each card for the books that we're reading that week and update what pages we're reading. And then again, I get to check them off once we complete them. So it's a really good record keeping tool. Do you need to put the image on here? Absolutely not. That's just me being super extra and it's a nice visual to look at and helps me organize my thoughts when I'm trying to figure out what we need to do for the day. You could do it or you could do something as simple as checklists for each day. You don't have to do all the different cards that I do. For me, it helps. I, it's just, it's more of a benefit than a con to me. So Tuesdays are geography with Torchlight. Wednesday, we do Blossom and Root Science. So on here, I'm able to include the links that we need to watch for the day. Again, I added an image. I found it online. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to do that. Again, I just like it. But I can put in the links that we need to read for the day, talk about the big picture ideas, what books we're reading, and then our um, experiment for the day, and then our student notebook entry. So checking all that off once we complete that. And then we don't have another elective besides Spanish in the morning on Thursday, so that's already completed. And then Fun Fridays, again, are just Spanish lessons. The girls both have one thing to do for language arts. My oldest has her writing prompt for the week for Evan Moore. My oldest, or excuse me, my youngest will then do a phonics lesson. We're doing a how to draw series um, for art online so the girls will learn how to draw different things. And then we watch a video for Torchlight for the uh, country we're learning about. It's not through Torchlight. I just find a video. So for example, when we did Australia, we had the girls watch Rescuers Down Under on Disney. Um, you know, we did Coco for when we learned about Mexico. So we learned about Dia de los Muertos. Um, so I'll just pick a movie out and then I can also link it here if I want to, like to Disney Plus or Netflix or wherever. Um, so it's just... Trello is just really nice and it's easy to move things around as necessary. It's great for record keeping and it helps me stay organized visually and mentally. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope that was super helpful for you. If you're not familiar with Trello, I'm thinking about doing a whole planning series on Trello, how it works. Um, of course, this was super high level just to show you what it looks like when I'm planning a week, um, but I'd be more than happy to go more into depth about the features that Trello has and how to use it. So if that's interest to you, definitely put it down in the comments, say, hey, I wanna learn more about Trello make some more videos about it and I will do the thing. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.